Hello guys, now we shall be discussing regarding the topography of the trachea and after that the topography of the esophagus. Okay, so first of all before I discuss the topography of the trachea, first of all you have to know that the cartilage which we have over here is called as a thyroid cartilage. And just below the thyroid cartilage you have got a cricoid cartilage. Okay, and below the cricoid cartilage you have got a bone called as hyoid bone, right. So here we basically have this particular cartilage over here which you can see right so this cartilage is called as your thyroid cartilage right so this cartilage over here is called as the thyroid cartilage okay yeah so this cartilage over here is called as your thyroid cartilage now just below your thyroid cartilage you have got another cartilage just below your thyroid cartilage you have got another cartilage like this right so this one over here is called as your cricoid cartilage so what is this cartilage which is located beneath this is called as your cricoid cartilage now after this cricoid cartilage you have got your trachea like this this is your trachea and all of you know that the trachea bifurcates down into two bronchi right so these two are called as what one is called as the right principal bronchus other one is called as the left principal bronchus and all of you know that there are around 15 to 20 uh, rings all the way that are located here i hope you are aware of that right so these are complete circular rings or semicircular rings these are semicircular rings so anteriorly you can find a complete ring but posteriorly it is completely empty so anteriorly you can find see if this is a ring like this anteriorly you can find a ring but posteriorly when you see there is a gap here okay so this is a semicircular c-shaped rings they are located how many are they located there are around 15 there are around 15 c-shaped rings like this okay so here you have got this one is called as the left principal bronchus and here you have got is the right principal bronchus left and right principal bronchus right and here this one is called as your thyroid cartilage thyroid cartilage and this is called as your cricoid cartilage so this is called as your cricoid cartilage okay now where is your cricoid cartilage located so exactly speaking the lower end of the cricoid cartilage where is that located it is located at the level of c6 so your trachea also starts from the lower end of the cricoid okay it starts from the lower end of the cricoid and this point of bifurcation whatever you can see into right and left principal bronchus this is at the lower end of t4 what this is at the t4 exactly speaking the lower end of the t4 so all the way from the lower end of the cricoid till the t4 right this is the place of complete trachea so how much centimeters you know the trachea range is about 10 to 15 centimeters in length okay the trachea is completely about 10 to 15 centimeters and if someone asks you the topography so you have to tell that is from the lower border of cricoid lower border of cricoid in the sense c6 till t4 so this is the topography here okay so this is the topography of the trachea and after this uh, the next important thing you have to know is that you know uh, right main bronchus or left main bronchus it might be you have got the lung like this you have got your lung right so in this lung there are many different kinds of uh, let us say lobes for example right lung is having how many lobes right lung is having around three lobes left lung is having how many lobes left lung is having two lobes and right lung is having how many bronchopulmonary segments it is having 10 bronchopulmonary segments left lung is having how many 10 so total 20 bronchopulmonary segments are located and how many lobes in five lobes okay so overall we have got 20 
20 bronchopulmonary segments in completely five lobes five lobes of two lungs five lobes of two lungs right so this is something very important which you have to know for your exams right now after this we shall focus on the esophagus right so regarding this esophagus from where does this esophagus basically start esophagus starts from the cricopharyngeus muscle right so exactly uh, let me write it down here this part over here is called as your pharynx what is this part called as this part is called as pharynx for example after that here you have got a muscle okay this muscle which i'm drawing right now is your cricopharyngeus muscle so exactly from the cricopharyngeus muscle this entire uh, muscular smooth muscle which is coming down is called as your esophagus and obviously this is your stomach this is your stomach okay so this entire muscular part which you can see all the way down like this right so this entire muscular part is called as your esophagus now if someone asks you what is the complete length of the esophagus the complete length of the esophagus we will discuss part by part okay for example from here all the way till here this part you call it as a cervical part of the esophagus this cervical part of the esophagus is around 4 centimeters so let us say this is the cervical part of the esophagus which is around 4 centimeters after the cervical part this entire part here is called as a thoracic part of the esophagus and you know thoracic part of the esophagus is how many centimeters 20 centimeters thoracic part of the esophagus is around 20 centimeters the last part here the last part of the esophagus is this one so this is the last part of the esophagus and this is in the abdominal part so you call this as an abdominal part of the esophagus and how much is the abdominal part of the esophagus just one to two centimeters one to two centimeters so overall overall if someone asks you what is the entire length of the esophagus so it would be somewhere around 25 centimeters and from where this esophagus is ranging esophagus ranges all the way from c6 right from c6 all the way till here so what is this level over here that is t11 okay after that the esophagus opens into the diaphragm so from C6 all the way from C6 till T11 is the esophagus. So esophagus is having many parts. What are these parts? One is called as the cervical part of the esophagus. Next we have got the thoracic part of the esophagus. Next we have got the abdominal part of the esophagus. Okay, so cervical part is just 4 centimeters. Thoracic part is 20 centimeters and abdominal part is 1 to 2 centimeters. Okay, so this is the esophagus. Now, after this, we have to study that there are some constrictions within this esophagus. So, let us see what are the different kinds of constrictions you will come across in the esophagus. Okay, so what are the different kinds of constrictions in the esophagus? Constrictions in the esophagus. So regarding the constrictions in the esophagus, there are different. So how many constrictions are there? Usually we have got four important constrictions. So just look at the picture first. Let us say this is your esophageal opening. Okay. And here exactly near the esophageal opening, you have got one constriction. What is that constriction? I will tell you. And this is the normal esophagus again. Okay. And exactly here, you have got another constriction. This is a second constriction. After that, immediately you have got a third constriction here. You have got a third constriction. And finally, when you are going down, right, so here you have got another constriction. And after that, your stomach continues like this. Your stomach continues. Okay. So, what are these four different constrictions which you are able to see in the esophagus? First important constriction all of you know that here we have got a muzzle like this right this muscle i have already told you that this muscle is called as what this is called as cricopharyngeus so this muscle is called as cricopharyngeus cricopharyngeus so this kind of constriction is called as 
cricopharyngeal constriction or you also can call it as pharyngoesophageal constriction because the upper part is pharynx and the lower part is completely esophagus so this constriction is called as a cricopharyngeal constriction or you can call it as a cervical constriction or you can call it as a pharyngoesophageal constriction so cricopharyngeal constriction or you can call it as a cervical constriction or you can also call it as a pharyngo esophageal constriction okay so if if someone asks you where is this uh, constriction that is exactly located it is exactly located at c6 but anyways these things i will write at the end okay for you to remember easily but for now what do you need to know that you have to know that the pharyngoesophageal constriction or cervical constriction or all these the english is different but everything is the same next important thing is that as i have already told you here you have got another constriction right so what is this constriction exactly this is the constriction which you can see exactly at the place where you have your iota right so this is called as the arch of iota so wherever there is arching near the arch of iota you have got a constriction okay third important thing third important thing is that there is another constriction which you can uh, see here this is the thing so this is your trachea which is bifurcating into your left principal bronchus as well as the right principal bronchus right i hope you know this so exactly at the place where there is bifurcation not the right especially i'm talking about the left wherever there is bifurcation that is why you now what i will do is i'll like slightly correct this picture now so if you can see here if you can see here clearly what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to put the tube straight on the right side but i'm trying to put a small constriction on the left side so exactly where this left uh, main bronchus is present or left principal bronchus is present there there is a constriction and this constriction is called as a bronchial constriction okay now after that we have got the last constriction what is that last constriction so this is a constriction where you see this is the constriction where the esophagus enters into the diaphragm so this is a constriction where the esophagus enters into your diaphragm okay it pierces the diaphragm so this constriction is called as diaphragmatic constriction so we have got four important constrictions so one constriction where the cricopharyngeal muscle is present right we have got another constriction over here right so this constriction what is this constriction over here this is called as aortic constriction okay and after that here we have got another constriction this is called as a bronchial constriction bronchial constriction and finally we have got the last constriction this is called as a dia pragmatic constriction okay so where do we have this uh, uh, let us say the cervical constriction or cricopharyngeal constriction at the level of c6 okay next this one we will have at the level of t4 next which this one will have at the level of t6 and finally diaphragmatic at the level of t10 64 60 just remember it as 64 60 64 60 60 okay so these are the different constrictions which you can see here right so these are the constrictions which you can see in the esophagus and again once again i have already talked about the length of the esophagus which is 25 centimeters in which the cervical part is 4 thoracic part is 20 abdominal part is 1 to 2 okay so this is c6 this is t11 constrictions of the esophagus four constrictions so this constriction is called as cricopharyngeal c6 and this is called as aortic this is called as bronchial and diaphragmatic constriction so these uh, uh, topographic numbers these are very important okay so these are what these are not your rib levels these are your vertebral levels so these vertebral levels are also very very important so these are all the important things which you need to know regarding the topography of esophagus so thank you so much for watching my video goodbye